Hello, Vishal. So we're talking about online qualitative research today. How have you seen this evolve over time as it's become more mainstream? Well, Paul, um, as I'm sure you're aware, we've seen online qual evolve quite significantly over the last few years. We've seen a great improvement in technology and also um, a greater acceptance for online methodologies, and therefore an increasing number of organizations are embracing this newer way of conducting research. And we've seen this in a, a number of sectors, but now we're seeing it more and more in the, in the pharmaceutical sector. And up until now, online research has been quite limited to quantitative research. But as we move forward, we're seeing qualitative research now getting in on the act. And we're certainly witnessing a shift towards utilizing these new channels. And what we're seeing is that the, the type of research that is being conducted isn't vastly different to face-to-face -face qualitative work, but the ways in which the research is, is being conducted is moving to this online methodology, which is being coupled with the ability to test various stimuli online. And that, that is certainly um, an appealing proposition to clients as clients are being faced with um, more challenges within the marketplace, not only from a, a financial and a time resource perspective, but also being challenged with finding ways of conducting research in more innovative methodologies. Sure. So how would you summarize the different approaches to conducting online qualitative research? So the approaches themselves are quite similar in conducting in-person qualitative research, including online bulletin boards, advisory boards, ethnographic research, amongst others. However, what we're seeing is that it's able, one is able to reach harder to reach respondents who may not always be willing to travel to a central location or may not be in the same city as where the research is actually taking place. So what we're seeing is that recruitment of respondents is becoming slightly easier, and it's also providing the ability to capture insight from a wider audience. What we're also seeing is that patient research is being conducted in a far more efficient manner, especially in those conditions which may be hard to speak about in a face-to-face -face environment. In addition to that, one can engage audiences via webcams, as well as posing a number of questions over an extended period of time I guess what we've seen in traditional face-to-face uh, -face qual research is that you will generally be in a, a central location with an individual in-depth interview or even in a, um, in a larger audience for a, a short period of time. But now being able to conduct this online means you can actually extend the time period over which you can, you can conduct the research. And also what we're seeing is there's an increase in the usage of smartphones and different apps. And so therefore, online qual research can be conducted in effect, any time and any place. And it gives the researcher and the organization the ability to gain insight into how patients and also physicians are responding to various stimuli at any given point during the day, rather than at a, um, a shortened period of time in a, in a central location. So as I said earlier, the approaches themselves are quite similar to what you would expect. It's just the way in which one can go about actually conducting the qualitative research. Of course. Now, is there a difference in the way you would perhaps structure the questions or perhaps um, the length of the interview for an online study? Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, one of the advantages of the online approach is that you can actually conduct the research over a, a longer period of time. So essentially, you could run a bulletin board over three to five days uh, and therefore capture greater insight from the respondents. What it also means is that in certain situations, the respondents have a bit more time to actually give the deeper insight into the questions that, that are being asked and really think about their responses. And also with the online approach, questions can be structured to capture greater depths of information. But I think the one thing that you have to remember is that as long as there's a, a clear objective in place as to why the research is taking place and what the, um, the moderator would like to get out of that research, that is going to help to establish and ascertain the actual length of time over which the online study can take place. So, you know, one of the things that I would say is it's always important to A, have clear objectives, B, have trained moderators who are fully aware of the limitations and the advantages of the technology that's being used. 
And I think once you have those in place, the length or the structure of the interview will quite easily fall out of that. So, um, as I said, you know, one of the, the advantages is that you can extend the time period over which you are conducting the interview. The other, the other bit to look at is, for example, if we take ethnographic research, you know, certainly with patients, for example, whereas traditionally one would have to go into one's home or one's workplace to see what is actually happening, and therefore you're quite restricted to maybe half a day or so, with the online approach, the respondent can actually have a webcam for an extended period of time within the location that they're at and then upload the actual um, images or the video or whatever it may be. So I think in terms of, as I said, the structure, um, as long as there's a clear objective, but also in terms of the length of the study, you can actually increase the length of the study and therefore get a much richer insight from what the respondents are uh, are giving back. So some clear advantages there from doing online qualitative research. Conversely, do you think there are certain areas where these online studies don't work so well, where you might perhaps still recommend more traditional research routes? Yeah, I think um, you know online quality is great in, in certain situations, but I don't think it's going to o- overtake everything. It's not going to um, be the be all and end all per se. And a couple of those areas where the online methodology may not work so well is, is first of all, geographical in nature. You know, as we know, in the majority of developed countries, the internet and, and online usage is up to a, a very high standard where the connection is excellent. However, when you're looking at much larger studies and, and you want to go out and, and maybe conduct the research in um, countries where the internet usage isn't as great as some of the more established markets, that is an area where um, online qual may not be so great, um, and that is down to the technology. The other area where you may want to consider not taking an online approach is where you want a significant interaction amongst the respondents, and you want to get them in a room, and you really want to view how they are reacting to the responses and have a a real in-depth, ongoing discussion and see the interaction between um, all the participants. So um, research methodologies like wargaming, for example, may not lend itself so well to the online qualitative methodology. And and so what I'd say is that it's great for capturing straightforward insights, but not so great for capturing the views of a larger group. And another example of that may be when you're looking to develop a clinical trial study and you have the KOLs and you have the thought leaders within a room and you want to see that interaction and, and then bouncing off each other, in that instance, um, a qual approach may not be the most efficient manner to, to capture the insight.